So another key principle of regenerative agriculture is integration of trees on farm. So we're in a beautiful part of Gippsland here with rolling hills that are primarily dominated by pasture. In pasture systems we have a limited number of, of uh, species with limited root architectures. Some of these species might grow to a few inches under the ground, their roots might grow to a few inches under the ground, some might grow to half a metre or even more. But there's still a lot of soil in these deep red ferrosols that's not being utilised by pasture species. So integration of trees into these systems allows for that extra dimension of rooting to exploit these soils. So these roots are going down one metre, two metres down into the, these deep soil profiles and accessing water reserves that are just not being utilised by the pasture species. Now on top of that there's a range of additional benefits that accrue from having trees on farm. One of the probably most important uh, is the change in humidity that happens under trees. So trees are evapotranspiring water from those deeper parts of the soil and it's evaporating out of the leaves. And the physical presence of the trees themselves are helping to, to uh, prevent the movement of that moist air out of the paddock. So for the pasture species that are growing underneath, they're growing in a more humid environment, they're less water stressed, the production is going to be enhanced. Similarly, some parts of the pasture are under shade and as the sun moves around during the day, not all of this pasture is exposed to full sunlight, unlike the neighbouring pastures that have no tree cover. Testing has shown in this pasture, moisture levels in the top 10 centimetres are higher in summer than they are in a pasture with no tree cover. And this is not what we would expect. We would expect that the trees would be competing with the pasture and would be drawing down moisture uh, to the detriment of the pasture. That doesn't appear to be the case. Now what's also happened here is there's been a lot of experimentation to see what pasture species are going to be most compatible with the trees. And that's been a process of evolution and discovery where species such as brome and clovers are really coming to the fore here. And as you can see, able to grow right up to the base of the tree. So the loss of grazing from the presence of the trees is almost negligible. And of course, the trees are going to be an additional important income source at harvest. So the integration of livestock into these systems as well means that the livestock not only have access to quality pasture, but they have shade, they have protection from wind, they're less physiologically stressed. So in a more dynamic and tiered system, we have leaves falling from the trees, we've got prunings from these trees, we've got a lot of woody material going into this, and woody material is what we need to stimulate soil fungi. Then the cattle come through, they crash graze these pastures, they're trampling a certain amount of that material into the ground, and of course they're spreading manure all over the place. In this pasture also there's dung beetles and the dung beetles are cycling that manure and they're basically bringing that down into the root zone of the pastures and the trees which is where it's going to have most effect. So when grazing cattle under trees there's a couple of things we need to be mindful of. We don't want the stock to be under the trees for too long for fear of compaction effect and impact on the tree feeder roots. We don't want them hanging around so long that they're going to turn to the trees and start eating the bark and potentially ring barking the trees and we don't want the trees to be overloaded with nutrient which may predispose them to pest attack. Prior to European settlement this area would have been covered entirely by trees. And when I look at a landscape like this, covered in trees, I see the tree roots. And tree roots functioning like Rio in concrete, binding the entire landscape together. When this landscape was cleared, that was when the first accounts of erosion started to come through. And particularly on steep landscapes such as this, erosion would have been a particular challenge. Evidence of that is seen behind us here where we see landslips that have resulted because of the weight of water in the landscape. And as that water tries to drain through the soil, it creates a lubricating surface on which soil can slump. This landscape is characterised now by the replacement of trees in the landscape, strategically located to address some of these management issues. Shell belts are really significant in a landscape like this for a number of reasons. They provide 
physical protection to stock and they provide benefits also to pastures and crops growing in the lee of the shelter belt. The extent of the benefit from shelter belts is approximately 12 times the height of the tree. So it extends out considerable distances from the shelter belt itself. One of the features of regenerative agriculture is that we're managing each system as a unique agro ecosystem. So in other words, every farm is different. So where we're managing extremely steep slopes, it's a nice thing to say that it should be planted out or it should be alley planted. But in reality, that's a very expensive thing to do. And we have issues like weed management and a range of other challenges associated with doing this. So the recommendation is to trial the approach. Trialing an area using 10 or 20% uh, to start with uh, it means that we don't have to invest too much energy or resources or money in attempting something that we don't quite know what the outcomes are going to be. We can be guided by good science, we can be guided by the experiences that we've had elsewhere, but because the system is unique to this particular farm, we have to figure out what's going to work on this farm.